Yeah. You're one man that is truly passionate about Africa. Yes. And you're investing your days, your hours, your your everything yeah. across the African yeah. continent. I mean, and you just want to talk about that and from a tech side of things and the many things that you're doing around this place and really the vision around it. I think that for me, um, our history was what started inspiring me. Mm. Um, I'd say this without mints and words, and I've said this in different places. And and I, I, I look, I think the truth doesn't care about people's feelings. It, it's just got to be said. Mm. I think one of the greatest problems we've had in Africa is our education. Mm. Um, I grew up knowing more about God and Gurdjieff back than I did about Kwame Nkrumah. Mm. That picture is wrong. Mm. Somebody intentionally hacked our history mm. to give us a certain narrative. Mm. Um, but then when I started growing up and got the independence of knowledge mm. and found out that we were kings and we we're wealthy mm. and we we're powerful mm. and we started civilization mm. and we came up with language mm. when the Egyptians were putting hieroglyphics together. Mm. We started mathematical equations before the Romans came and stole it and went back and called it Roman numerals. Mm. We started the first medical procedure. Mm. Our, our great great grandfathers understood technologies that still today's technology can still not explain the pyramids. Right. And they still stuck up up there. That's mind boggling. <laughs> right? Many so, years, many later, years later, man. Many years later, you guys can still figure out the technologies our great, great, great fam our grandfathers built, grandmothers built, and they still look as solid today. So um, it, it started from there. It started from what went wrong. But we don't think about that alone. No, we don't. I mean, in fact, when you say about it, yeah. that's what I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah, right now you need to think about <laughs> yeah, it. Absolutely. Like, what happened? Yeah, like like Timbuktu had the first ever university. That's Mali. Mm -hmm. Like. Even education, we own that. Mm. The first ever public university was in Timbuktu. Mansa Musa traveled. The, the, the history book says he was so wealthy that when he traveled with his party, the amount of gold they were holding, we immediately arrived in your region, he would change the, the GDP of the country. Whoa. The amount of wealth he came in with. Whoa. This Mali. On our continent. Right here. here. Right here in Africa. Right so much the Arabian said, if you wanted to tackle poverty, go to Sudan. Global. It's like today somebody going on CNN and say, hey, guys, the problem, the solution to COVID. Arabian merchants used to say to each other that if you have poverty issues, go there. It? It's there. Um, so that's where it started. It started from what went wrong? Why is that other skin pigment superior? Why do I feel intimidated? Why does it look like everything there is, is and everything us is here? What's going on here? Um, and that started the process. Something is me. twisted about Something that. Something is wrong with this picture. Yeah. How do I have all the natural resources? But I'm the poorest of them all. I'm the one who begs depending on aid and all of that stuff. Yeah, I'm the one who's giving aid here. <laughs> who should aid who? Who should aid who? <laughs> we have it. Good question. Ghana was so rich. We used to give Burkina Faso free electricity. We had clean power. This is history. I'm like, wait. There was a time our city. So green energy was a way. We were big at it. <laughs> there was a time our city yep. was 103 to the dollar. We were stronger than the dollar. Today, our city is almost 8 to the dollar. How are you taking my natural resources to back your economy and yet your money is eight times my money? That's where it started from. Those questions then led me to understand that there was an intentional design to let Africa be where it is now. Those are very um, deep questions. And, Those are and, really deep yeah. questions. Those are really deep yeah, questions. And, and, <laughs> and I, wish, I don't, and I don't think we th I don't think we think about them much. I don't even know we pay attention. I it's don't by know design. what I'm even here to It's by design, brother. There's distraction that was created for especially our young people not to have time to think about this. It's by design. There's a whole psychological study, not to cut you, about how addictive social platforms are specifically 
for certain regions. Specifically for certain regions. Tell me about it. It is by design. Um, so, for instance, in more advanced um, economies, it is almost a thing for parents and their devices to have what we call a limit on screen time. This is not in Africa. Mm -hmm. There's, even our parents are not educated to the technology to understand that this is possible. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of the advanced world, there are features, there are things in their devices that allows them to say our kids are only going to do this many hours on their devices and we're going to put them into this and into that and into that. But here, this is no free range. Just give it to them, give them more content. How do they like it? All the it turn it, turn it, turn it. Yeah. Viral, viral, viral. Yeah. Give them content. Yeah. Get them so distracted, what? they will never ask the real questions. What? That's where it started for me. Um, technology then is what started even in the playing field. What? Because all of a sudden, they couldn't hide it in books. It was on my screen. Right, right. And, and, I, have, and I have no problem going to the school. Going here, right. I will. Right. right, so once technology brought me the knowledge of my history, mm -hmm. it's like, ah. Uh, what else can it do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I realized, okay, by its very definition, even though it started as a military spy technology, when you think about the internet, mm -hmm. DARPANET was created by the United States as a military technology. Mm -hmm. That's what built the basis for the www.internet world that we came to have. Mm -hmm. But what it is becoming now, especially after Bill Gates started building windows on top of it, mm -hmm. and then in the early 90s and early 2000s when we started bringing social, Web 1, read only, mm. we only go to take information. Mm. Web 2, mm. read and write, mm. that is when social started. I was like, okay, I think the dynamics are changing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized people started saying, I made this amount on Facebook. Mm. And I did this, I was okay. Mm. So there's economic value. Mm. Ooh, mm. getting even more interesting. How do I chase mm. this? Mm. So it was one thing led to the other, mm. but it all started with a curiosity, mm. asking the right difficult questions mm. and applying myself to it. Mm. That's how my journey has been. Right, right. And how, how is that going, man? I mean, uh, you've built many businesses on top of that. Man. How has it gone? <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a millennial who um, is lucky to have documented his process. So anybody who jumps on any of my socials, that's a little bit of Google, you should see me from about 10 years ago till how on where I am now. Mm. And it's gone great. Mm. Uh, it's not been without challenges. Yep. It's not been without uh, difficulties on the road. But I am definitely very far right. from where I started right. from. Right. Um, it's paid off in a way that anybody should be able to look at me and say, if Kwame did it, I can do it. Period. That's my message. In different African markets, you've you've taken the trouble of just finding out where what is the status of this African country and yes. what what could we do yes. in this one that is different from that other one yes. and so on. And yes, so on. tell us about that. Ben. So so that this is how it happened when I started traveling um, and I started traveling heavily maybe about five six years ago. Uh, I started realizing Africa has common denominators. Right. There are things that are common amongst us. The corruption is common. Mm -hmm. uh, abysmal leadership is common. Mm -hmm. uh, a citizenry that's not empowered is common. Yeah. Poverty is common. Um, um, a, a lack of access to infrastructure is common. Sounds like vices is what's common. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the common things yeah. that, that unite us. But I also realized that uh, our, our, in the areas of progress, uh, there, there were differences. So yep. if you go to South Africa and Morocco, yep. those guys are on a different continent. Right. So much, so much that I mean, so much that even the Moroccans don't really consider themselves Africans. As Africans, yes. You know, uh, then you go to Liberia, right, or Congo, right. It's like wow. You know, then in Ghana and, 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 and Kenya, we're a little bougie, right. You know, um, right. and then you have like in between your Nigeria, you don't even know where to put them, right. Uh, so much money, so much opportunity, but so much poverty and so much craziness. All living in the same country. All in the same place. Right. It's like it's a country of contrasts. Oh my God, you know it. <laughs> it's like the bridge yeah. divides the country. <laughs> Um, so depending right. on which side of the bridge you are, right. you experience a different Nigeria. Um, so that's what I, I, it started being an unconscious realization. Like, mm. wait, we cannot take the same solution everywhere. Yeah. There were certain solutions that were fit for all, right. um, but some were not going to be able to. If I go to Liberia, I probably need to talk to the young people about hope. Because mm. they've given up. Right. If I go to DR DRC Congo, I need to talk to them about hope. Um, but when I come to Kenya, I talk to them about innovation. Right. I talk to them about opportunities. Right. When I go to Nigeria, they are aggressive. 
I just need to give them knowledge as to how to do it. Right. And they'll see it through. Right. When I go to Ghana, I need to challenge them to be a little bit more proactive. Because right. in our country, things are a little bit chill. Right. We've not had civil war. We've not had any coup d'etats. We had that in the military days. We've not seen it since in the 90s. I didn't see any trouble, you know, well, since all I've been your life born. you have it, man. I have never. 90? I'm, I'm 90. 90. 90. 1990. 90, I've never right, seen war. Right. We've never had. Most so likely by the time we air this, it's going to be your birthday on the 5th of May. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy yeah. birthday, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My 32nd. I yeah, love it. Your 32nd. Um, yeah. So, so that's how I started being like, okay, guys, since we're a knowledge bureau and we're going into these places to add value, can we do it based on data? So we started paying attention to the market. So like I said, in places like South Africa, um, the, the economic dispersion and the economic uh, trajectory is very, very different. Mm. Uh, they're a little bit more advanced. They have a credit score system. Mm. Uh, everything is on credit. Right. Once you have a good credit, you can get your car, right. your house. Right. That doesn't happen in Nigeria. It doesn't mm. happen in Kenya. It doesn't happen um, in Ghana. But in places like Kenya, Nigeria, um, Ghana, you see a robust young group of innovators who are prospecting the tech, mm. who are building. Mm. Um, I mean, in Pesa is so uh, doing so well right. in in my country is called mobile money right. um, in Liberia they don't have that right. you know, the technology is not there the right. people don't understand it that much right. um, so so that's we, we we look at the micro data which by the way interestingly a lot of that data is not local is the UN as US AIDS as global statistics it's a lot of the statistics about our own local markets but but when you on the ground talking to the everyday person, right. you get a better picture. Right. So we take that and then slap it against the, the macro data and say, what can we take to these places? And that's what informs the kind of conversations we take country to country. But you see, the benefit you have, Kwame, is the fact that then, the disparities across the different markets yeah. also provides the opportunities for who is at what point Perfect. to trade with Perfect. whatever it is. Which is, yes. just to put in there, which is the reason why if this continent was to take this AFCTA thing properly, yep. because what's happening is there are products and solutions in so many markets that would feed problems in so many other markets. Right. But guess what? It's cheaper to fly to Europe than it is to fly to some African countries. It makes no sense. But you see, the same, the same realization that you got must be the what we then build on to yes. begin to say Africa must trade with Africa. Easy. Africa must provide solutions to Africa. So, so the question is, what, what, what are these barriers and where must we start from your vantage position of being across all these different countries? The little I've seen is one of our biggest bottlenecks is policy. Let me not call it, them, let me not call it politics, politicians. I don't want their trouble. Policy. Policy is always almost 25 years late to whatever the innovative conversation is. It's like, are you guys asleep? Sometimes I wonder if our politicians travel. Like when they go, what do they see? Are they kept in some bunk? They, they put under a stone? Like don't they see what's happening? One of the biggest problems is policy. It takes them so long to decide it. Um, I'm moving, by the way, to Dubai within the next few months. And why am I doing that? Is because the policies there is ripe. It, in fact, the number of write-offs I saw in the process of getting my um, permanent residency and trying to license our crypto uh, business there, the number of write-offs is almost as though they say, you know what, don't worry about this, don't worry about this, no, just sit down, Let's bring value. Let's get it done. They have a program called One Million Arabians Code. They, paid one mil they pay one million young Arabs every year to learn coding. Think about that for a moment. If even... That's in Dubai. In Dubai. Every year. One million Arabians. You don't need to be an Emirati. You need to be Arabian. So you can be from Qatar. You can come. We'll give you money. Lend the code. When you're done with the code, you're thrown into various government agencies. Go build what will bring the world to us. So they now have the museum of the future. Mm. And they are prospecting flying taxis. Mm. Look at how many people flooded Dubai for the export. Massive. Massive. Our biggest problem, policy. Uh, the second one, education. Mm. Our education is still redundant, it's still stuck in a time that is not relevant to the, to the job markets of today. Something needs to be ab done about it. The third, probably what a lot of young people don't want to hear because I don't want to sit here and pin it on people. Mm. There is not, to a larger extent, 
to a bigger percentage of the of the young population we have an enthusiasm to say how do we prospect technology to create solutions there is a small section small percentage of young people who are doing it but africa has the biggest youth population demography in the world average age in africa is 19. so it's a pediatric continent look at us we should and be controlling we're, the world. We're even technology natives. We were born this is what we're, born we're natives. This is what we should be doing. And therefore, my million dollar question now that we are a pediatric continent and we were born in technology and all of that, what is this perspective that we need to suddenly have that hopefully shifts us, helps us to address the questions of what you're calling policy and everything else? Because there's got to be a solution to this thing that helps us to live forward. It, it has to. I sh I don't have all the answers, Dennis. It needs to be coordinated. Um, and, and, and I'm, I, this is not an act. It, it always breaks me when I think about it. Because if something doesn't change, we're headed for doom. We're headed for doom. Um, crime is on the rise everywhere in Africa. Uh, a lot of it is grounded in hunger, poverty. Um, it needs to be coordinated. It needs to be parents doing it different with children at home, schools doing it better with a better curriculum, governments catching up with the times and bringing policies that enables an environment. If today as a young person, I had a business idea and I wanted funding, good luck if you get it. But if you stick through it, you're about to go through three years. If you're a lady, people your father's age will try and get in your pants more times than not, you might give up on the idea. Meanwhile, I have friends who live in Europe who get the government writing to them, asking them, don't you have any ideas for us to finance? Every time my European friends came to Ghana or to any of my conferences and saw that I needed to go through three months of talking to MTN or Vodafone or any corporate to give me money, they were shocked. Like, Kwame, if you lived in Europe, the district office would have given you 50,000 euros for this. Plus what you're doing is so big, you get 1 million euro, and they will tell you to do it all across the region. What we beg for and we don't get is offered in different economies. When COVID came, you could see the disparities in the world. Canada, the US, they were paying their citizens free stipends for being citizens and saying things are hard, the companies have stopped, you're not going to work, this is $1,400 every month pair citizen. If you had six people in a home, a father and a mother and four kids, look at those numbers. You're doing about $8,000 from the government. In Africa, they couldn't even give us nose marks for free. Not even testing. So I don't have the answer. That's why I picked the little thing I can do. I have a voice. I have a brand. I have agency. I will go to the young people and tell them this is how I changed my life. And so if the governments are not responding, this is an alternative for you. Start prospecting that and maybe something could change. You all around said something very powerful and you said technology flattens the geographies, flattens many different things. And I, and I wonder from your perspective, the great tech guy you are, the great voice that you are, does tech provide us some level of playing field that helps us probably deal with a policy problem and create the future that looks something close to what you just described? It does. The one thing tech gives us is, it gives us a voice. You saw what happened in Nigeria with, um, what's the name of that uh, thing that it did? NSAS. It was technology. Otherwise, it would have happened. It would have been swept under the carpet. People would have died and nobody would have heard it. So if not anything, it gives us an opportunity to voice out. That's one. Um, but for me, this is where it comes in. It is the power for Kwame Eeopoku to sit in Ghana, create content, reach an audience in Kenya, mm. so much that I can come here and fill a thousand seat auditorium. Mm. And well done for the ice Thank conference, you. man. Brilliant. Thank you. Good job with Thank Mike. Thank you so much. Uh, ben, uh, ben, yeah, yeah, an amazing young, young man. Young that is just amazing, young chap. And so, 
once I look at that, I say to myself, if, if this is access to audience, that could easily translate to access to economic tools. Mm. So uh, that same module that I use for them to hear my voice, I could use for them to see my product. Mm. I could use for them to see my service. Mm -hmm. So that if the policy here in this place is not helping, what about I put my product in a place mm -hmm. where the policy is better? Mm -hmm. And eventually when this government realizes that all there's a brain drain, all of the services, all of the products are leaving their economy and then crushing it. They might not have any ch choice mm. than to respond with favorable policy conditions. Mm. Mm. That's what I think technology offers us um, in the basic. Because we've got to begin somewhere. It has to start from we've somewhere. We've got to start. Again. I mean, we're not completely start. helpless. No. We've just got to figure out where do I then get it began. That's it. And thank you for investing in the young people, thank man. You. Thank you. I mean, uh, I think the narrative of helplessness is one we must also say we are not helpless. No, we have never been helpless. I think some of the effort we must put is to begin and figure out where can we start. Start, out. yes. Because then if I start somewhere, then it eventually begins. Starting is the biggest thing. That's it. Where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? Yeah. Um, uh, the right collaborations, um, given you empowering my voice, Right. me going back to empower your platform right that's where it starts right it needs to be collaborations it needs to be the united states of africa not in the way they're thinking it in the way that if i have a platform let me bring my kenyan brother so my kenyan brother brings me to kenya right so that my nigerian brother puts my kenyan brother and my Ghanaian brother in nigeria and we take him and put him in nigeria in accra right. that's how it needs to start right. the, the unification we're speaking about right. needs to first happen in the micro right then it can go to the macro. I, and I think it's going to be private sector led. I, I don't think it's going to be too it, much. It, it, that's the yeah. thing. It's, it's going to be <laughs> huge. If, if, if we follow those guys, we're not going anywhere, guys. It, it needs to be private sector led. Um, it needs to be uh, 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 people initiative led. It needs to be you and I, um, not, not, not the CS, not the minister, not the government. It has to be private sector. Like, right. That's the only way. Right. That's the only way. Think about what Elon Musk is doing. Right. NASA had been doing it for a hundred years. They were doing it for ten times the cost. The guy does it. Now he does it like twenty times. They used to do it once every two years. There we are. Private sector. There we are. Private sector. And, and that private sector is, is is actually yourself and what you're doing. doing yeah. Sometimes when I see you posting with a. Uh, Vusia, <laughs> <laughs> we are private sector guys. We're private sector, we're private sector yeah. guys. Absolutely private sector guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and and when you mention someone like Vuzi, that's that's an example. That's an example that the help is not going to come from governments. Right. It's going to come from individuals. Right. It's going to come from ideas. It's right. going to come from concepts. Right. That that gets community around it. Right. And then the change will begin. Correct. Yeah. But I think the more powerful thing that I also see is is also the power of mentorship. Just to be able to say that when I look at Kwame at 32, looking back at a young man like Benny Hinoli Bengo, yeah. he views himself what he was 10 years back yeah. and, and appreciates that if that young man got a hand mm. to help him, mm. then probably he's going to take half the time to get really yeah, 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 yeah. distance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and that's the thing that for me has got to be a real conversation. Yeah. Those that have made it yep. need to turn back yep. or look down and go, you come. Right. You come. Right. And if you dare not turn around and pick them, I will finish you. Right. So if I pick Benny, right. and Benny picks Betty, and right. Betty picks Kwame, and Kwame, right. eventually we rise. we'll have a critical core Correct. of people at the top. And then all of a sudden, it will be very uncomfortable to be at the bottom. Absolutely. 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 That's where mentorship comes in. But because you're a mentor too, I, I, I also want you to speak to mentees mm. and say, man, as a mentor, this, this is what draws us to guys. We, can, we are available to mentor. Yeah. But you've got to behave a certain way, man. I mean, you've got to be, meet a certain threshold, I suspect. Let me tell them the truth. Right. If you do not... If you do not... And it's actually looking at the camera and tell you. So I'll look in your face and tell you. If you do not have any value that you're bringing to the marketplace, if fame is what you're looking for, if money is what your focus is, then we're not attracted to that. I think the question for mentees should always be, how do I serve? Because the thing is, the things that we've acquired, the knowledge, the brand, the thing that you're looking for, we did not get it on a silver platter. 
and we do not want to cast our pearls to swine. And so you've got to prove to the person who has 24 hours not being enough for them that you deserve a 30 minute of their time that is not enough. And so you've got to prove that you're not a swine. And this is something we need to tell you. Stop being entitled. Nobody owes you anything. I don't owe you my time. I do not owe you sharing knowledge that I struggled for. However, you can earn it when you come to the plate and go, how do I serve? This is what I've done with the little I have. When we see tangible results, we want to amplify that. Mm -hmm. Come to us. Like, don't come with, to me with a concept paper. You will not get two seconds of my time. Go invest save for the next three months the little money you have do a small prototype of what you're looking to build bring me tangibility if you have believed in it well enough to apply your blood and sweat you might deserve my time if they're not telling you this you will never get mentors and if he probably is responding to you in the absence of these things he's using you i don't think i would add anything to that position my friend I mean, it is just plain and simple straight just as it is my friend Kwame, man, I can't thank you. Well, I could do this. Oh, I love this. Oh, yeah. I, love I, I, could, I could keep going. <laughs> Your energy is great. I love this. When I come back, we're doing part two. Well, you owe me part two. I'm doing part two. Me part and I'm bringing you to Ghana, by the yeah. way. You should come see what we're doing. I'll be more than happy. You should come. I'll you be should more than definitely, happy. Definitely, definitely come. Yeah. I, I look at one of my signature. I have one in May. It might be too short, but we have another one later in the year. Right. You should come. Right. You, uh, right. Come with the team. Come cover it. Absolutely. Come eat some fufu. Oh, wow. You know. We'll kill you, chili. But I must just <laughs> thank you for the fact that then you've got a heart for this continent. Yeah. None of us is going to fix Africa other than ourselves. We have a duty. Yes, this sir. is home. This is our continent. We yeah. have our issues, yes. yes sir. But I think we've got to rise up and say we are the guys to fix, fix it. Yes. Whether it's going to be an individual at a time, a country at a time, a community at a time, That's how whatever it takes, yes, sir. we're just going to have to do that. And, and just to add up and sign off, this is my final message. Yeah. If you're not part of the solution, then you're absolutely part of the problem. Get up and get something done. Africa is waiting for you, for it to happen. Sitting on your hands is contributing to the problem. Um, it says evil thrives when the righteous do, do nothing. nothing. All you have to do to contribute to Africa's problems, do, do nothing. nothing. That's it. And with your permission, I'll, I'll, I'll also state, uh, whining is also doing nothing. Whining is complaining, being on Twitter. Yeah. Trolling those who are doing it. You are even worse <laughs> off. The trolls. Yeah. Morons. Right. You are doing nothing. And instead of you to cheer, yeah. you're tearing down. Right. right. You are the problem. Right. Right. So you fund the problem. It's not like anybody who is trying to do something said they were perfect. They didn't say that. They said, in respective, irrespective of our weaknesses and shortcomings, we're going to bring our strength to the market right, right, and create value. Right. They didn't come asking for perfection. I don't know where this silly troll cancel culture, you know, let's beat them up on Twitter, this jungle mentality. Where did this come from? Small we used to be a else. continent that held each other up. Right. What right. happened? Back in the village, we held ourselves up. We held each held. other up. We, Absolutely. Pl we played together. Right. We, we were each other's keepers. Right. What happened to Ubuntu? And, and tell you what, uh, Kwame. And, 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 when the time calls, we have actually demonstrated we can stand together. We can. We can. That's how we gained our continent back to where we are now. Absolutely. The very spirit of Africa was called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Right. I am because, because you, you are. are. Right. But look at it now. It's like, oh, you are? I will tear you up because I'm not. Who did this to us? Wrong man. This interview will go far. Wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to go back to the original principle. It has the to be. Ubuntu it has to be. That helped us realize the wealth that we want yeah. and, and, and build it. Yes, sir. Build it. Yes, sir. And build it. Yes, sir. And become what we yes, must sir. become. We must become a better country. Yes, sir. But I suspect we're becoming better because of people like yourself. Thank you. And I must just say thank you, man. Thank you so I much. I can't believe that me. this is a 32 year old <laughs> voice, my friend. <laughs> Doing amazing yes, things. Yes, sir. We just started. Yeah. We just started. We're just getting started, Ben. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that, man. Your contribution on the SDGs. Yes. On the women of Africa. On the youth of Africa. Yes, sir. On the technology spaces of Africa, man. Yes, I mean, you owe me part two. <laughs> we, we will do it. We will do it. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, 
us, man. You can tell we are having loads and loads of fun with this conversation. Kwame just speaking his heart out. And I love your passion, man. I just love your passion, man. Thank you. Thank you. I love your passion. You brought energy. I love you brought energy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not part of the solution, Kwame says, you're definitely part of the problem. And complaining is not part of fixing the problem. You've got to rise up and connect with some of this wisdom. Do what you need to do. And for the young people, I hope you have what it takes to be a mentee. You've got to hold certain tenants, my friend. And I just want to remind you, man, you truly are a gold mine. But to unlock it and to become it, there is a mindset that gets it there. And Kwame shared a whole lot of that. So, man, my friend, man, you've got to rise up, dust up, and you've got to decide, I want to succeed. And you want to want it bad enough to do what it takes to become the greatness that you must become. And as Kwame says, the moment you are sighted as a guy that is rising up and trying to do something, Probably help comes on the way, man. It's not about concept papers. It's about investing your skin in the game and being able to demonstrate that then, yes, this means something to you, my friend. We could go on and on and on, but we've got to bring this one to one. It's one of the most difficult ones to close. So we're going to find a way to close this one, man. want to remind you, keep following us on the Goldmine Show on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And I want to allow Kwame to also give his handles because, man, this man is a world <laughs> of wisdom and knowledge. You've got to follow this man. So you want to share your handles uh, as well, right? So my handles is at Futurist Kwame across board, F-U-T-U-R-I-S-T, K-W-A-M-E, at Futurist Kwame, Instagram, Twitter. Um, on Instagram and Facebook, just so you don't fall for any type of funny thing, you see the blue tick next to my name. Um, on the other platforms, on LinkedIn, everywhere you put Futurist Kwame, you will find me. And just to follow the work I do, Google the name. Kwame A.O. Puko of Futures Kwame, you find everything about me. Well, I told you we have a great continent. This was Ghana in Kenya, man. Gold mine show going international. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that we could host Kwame on the show. Until next time, my friend, keep being the greatness that you are. And I must keep reminding you, you cannot quit on yourself. You cannot give up on yourself. You're a gold mine, and you've got to keep doing what you must do. God bless you, and see you next time. <laughs>